Good morning, everybody. How are ya? Guess what? It's time to cruise with the case handler. My name is Adam Handler. I'm a partner of Paul, Paul Isaac DeSico. I handle the personal injury cases, and we're here today to let you know that we are here to help you. Today is Thursday, June 18th, and we are thrilled that you're spending your morning with us. We know you have other options. There's plenty of things to watch on TV, although I'm not so sure any of us really want to see, see what's going on these days with our own eyes, but we're here to provide quality legal information, 100%, no strings attached, for free. Our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Our firm is Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Our main office is in downtown Manhattan at 225 Broadway on the third floor. We also have offices in Brooklyn and Peekskill, New York. We hope to be reopening very, very soon and seeing all your smiling faces uh, come through that door. It's been way too long and way overdue, but you should know that if you are listening to this show right now and you are a current client of Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, Seco, and the case handler, that your cases have been being worked on almost every day, taking meticulous care um, of your legal situation because we are fully aware that you have one chance to get it right. And we always say one chance, one choice of attorney. It should be Adam Handler, the case handler, and Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Again, our number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Give us a call, see what we're about. Get your immigration questions answered for absolutely 100% free. That is correct. Free phone consultations. Never been done in the history of this radio station, but we're proud to do it and we're proud to give back to the community that has embraced us. But again, it all starts with that phone call, 844-774-3529. And without further ado, even though we are man down today, Conrad the maestro uh, Pollock is dealing with uh, a client this morning. We still have an amazing panel. Of course, David Anneke, my co-host, Nelson Madrid, the Maverick, and Alan Kay, the General. Good morning to you. David, how are you Good today? Morning. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Good morning. The uh, Juneteenth Eve. And we'll touch on that later on in card events. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cruising with the Case Handler, 93.5 FM. Let's get fired up. Wagwan, one on deal with it. Turn up the thing, walk the thing. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's David Squeeze Anarchy. Hey, you've known me uh, to be on the station since 1996. Came out of corporate America and decided I don't want to go back there. So, I've created my own corporate entities. We market and promote here on the station. And, ladies and gentlemen, one of the uh, prevalent here on Link Up Radio on 93.5 FM has been immigration talk, has been law talk. And Adam Handler has always been a part of that for the past 15 years. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we've got some great attorneys, phenomenal attorneys. I mean, I can use so many adjectives. This is the only firm that you should be going with when it comes to, of course, finding attorneys for immigration. And obviously when it comes to accidents, yes, $120 million cannot be wrong, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you go with Adam Handler, the case handler. Once again, he's here to help you. Once again, he's here to take care of you. When it comes to accident cases, reach out to him as your case handler, your personal injury attorney. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to jump into it. Um, Nelsa, welcome to the panel again. For Good the morning. Time. Good morning. Right. Okay. The General, Alan K, welcome to the panel again. Good All morning. Right. Good to have you. And we are going to jump it off. We call him the General because of his depth, his knowledge in, of course, immigration. So we're going to let you tell us what's going on in immigration news, Alan, if you have any. And then we'll come right back and start taking questions, speaking with Adam Handler about his true success stories and so forth. Okay, let me give you a few announcements, some things that are important. The Supreme Court is expected today to hand down a decision on DACA. Now there are 650,000 people who are on DACA. Uh, what's gonna happen to them if the Supreme Court kills DACA? 
Uh, we don't know what the administration is going to do. Well, let me let me know. pause you for a second, Alan. What is DACA? DACA is a program for certain aliens who came here at a very young age and are were legally here and were able to file for DACA and get working cards and continuing to extend the working cards. So da DACA, I'm sorry, DACA, just to jump in right quick, DACA is actually short for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. These are children and well not children but these are people who arrived in the united states before the age of 16 and have basically been living in the united states most of their lives um under the previous administration um if you can dem if you could demonstrate that you had arrived before the age of 16 i think that you were physically present i, I forgot the exact year um, you were allowed to apply for employment authorization. Employment authorization is important because it not only allows you the ability to work, at the time it also allowed these, these people uh, the ability to apply and receive a social security card, a New York State driver's license, and basically protected them from you know, being put into deportation proceedings. Even if they were ordered deported, it basically allowed them to remain in the United States. So DACA was very significant for many, many people here. I'm sorry, Alan. You no, continue. so what we're saying is the Supreme Court is expected to come down with a decision perhaps today on DACA. The administration is trying, is trying to kill it. Uh, what happens, we don't know. But if the, if the Supreme Court kills DACA, what's gonna happen to these 650,000 people who have been on DACA, who has, as Nelson said, who have working permits, uh, driver's license and all this other kind of stuff. So this is one important thing to keep in mind and uh, probably by our next program uh, or when the next time I am on or maybe even before that, you'll know what the Supreme Court decided. It's really important. Next, American consulates are slowly starting to reopen and schedule appointments. Uh, but if you have an appointment at an American consulate, don't go now because the administration, Trump is expected to come out with another announcement, which will make it really difficult for you to come back. So if you have an appointment at an American consulate, don't go, talk to us, call us. We will tell you what you should be doing, but just very important, do not leave to keep an appointment at the American consulate. Next, um, 500, 5 million people are estimated to have naturalized in the United States since 2014, including 3.1 million who did so after Trump's election. This is a huge group, and this could decide who's gonna be the next president. So if you are an American citizen or you know American citizens, they've gotta come out and vote. There's a huge block of 5 million people who just naturalized can determine who's gonna be the next president. So it's something to really keep, important, keep in mind. Next, um, we know that immigration has said New York immigration was going to reopen June 15th. Uh, however, I just got a message from somebody I know who said that he got a call from the New York City field office about a naturalization interview for his client. And the officer told them they will be reopening July 13th. Now, whether that's July 13th for this guy's, this lawyer's client or the, the, ro the rollout is July 13th instead of June 15th, we'll know soon. So keep that in mind. Finally, people have been reading that the immigration service is running out of money. Uh, this is terrible. Uh, and so they in initially sent out an announcement they're gonna furlough 15,000 employees very shortly in June. Then that got another notice came out saying, well, we're gonna, we're gonna decide this in another month. So maybe in July, we'll know if they're gonna furlough people or not. Uh, USCIS has asked Congress for a lot more money so they can continue their operations. It's gonna be really important what happens because if they furlough people, service is gonna go down the drain. It's already pretty bad. So those are some of my announcements so okay. far today. Great. Alan Kay, ladies and gentlemen, um, once again, uh, one of the attorneys at PPID, but definitely the attorney that's got the most knowledge, depth, and experience 
okay, not just because of um, his age, but definitely because of his collaboration and working with so many people in the past. If you need to reach out to the firm, you've got to call this number now. I am going to allow everyone to get a free phone consultation, but we are going to do that. So if you call right now, as a matter of fact, call before the top of the hour and get yourself a free phone consultation off the air privately and confidentially. Call now and get that free phone consultation. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Dial that number now for the law firm PPID. Dial that number now for the case handler, Adam Handler. Dial that number now for Nelson Madrid, the Maverick. Dial that number for the general, Alan E.K. Ladies and gentlemen, the firm's number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. We're gonna be flipping it over to Adam Handler. I wanna hear if he has a true success story, uh, one of the war stories, okay, of how he fought for his client to get them the maximum compensation possible. Adam Handler, once again, ladies and gentlemen, is the stalwart, is the most celebrated personal injury attorney on the station. It is the man that is the go-to man when you get into an accident. It is the man you go to and no one else, okay, when it comes to accidents. So even if you're listening to other attorneys, talking to other attorneys, you want someone who has a track record for going for the maximum amount of money you can get when you get hurt in an accident, that being an automobile accident, slip and fall, medical malpractice, you name it, construction accidents, you need the case handler because you've got one chance, one choice, and he is your case handler. Adam Adler. My man, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Listen, uh, we are here pushing uh, you know, information out there. It's a lot of information and I hope people are, are taking it in. But the good news is, is that either you can go back on Facebook and rewatch this show, everybody out there listening right now on 93.5, if you can safely do so, when you get a chance, you know, check out uh, on Facebook, The Case Handler, or check out Paul, Paul Isaac DeSico, PPID. Uh, like the page, follow the page, and you can see all these shows uh, rerun as many times as you want. Uh, we've had thousands and thousands of views for each show. So the information we give you, I, I understand you know, it's a lot, uh, but uh, you know we're here uh, to give it to you in, in so many different formats uh, that you'll be able to understand it. But also the good news is, is that if you hear something that may apply to you or may apply to your case or may apply to a friend or family, uh, you can do something about it. You can pick up the phone and you can call 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. You know, we shoot out these dates and these rules and these regulations and these, these uh, current events with respect to immigration. But all you have to do is pick up the phone. And you can say, what was it that the general was saying earlier today uh, about uh, immigration running out of money? Or what was the general saying earlier today uh, about uh, the, the um, July 13th start date? The phone call is free. Uh, you're certainly not wasting our time because we're here to help and we're here to, to spread the word about our firm and, and the uh, amazing level of service that we can perform uh, for you and your family. I personally handle the, the injury cases. So uh, a lot of times people will say, hey, uh, Handler, or hey, Mr. Case Handler, I got an immigration question for you. And I say, well, well hold on, slow down for one second. Let me take down your information. Let me send it over to the immigration team. And then I know within just minutes, uh, somebody from the immigration team is giving them a call uh, and answering their questions for absolutely free. So we all work together, uh, but I uh, would, uh, would feel much more comfortable passing your questions on to the general or the Maverick or the Maestro or Andrea or any of the other, Trudy or, or Yee, any of the other really talented and dedicated immigration attorneys. But speaking of personal injury, um, I wanted to go back to a case that we settled earlier this year. Uh, every, you know, in personal injury, um, uh, you know, we have uh, one chance to get it right. And lately, it seems like uh, we're fighting uh, harder than ever uh, to, to get those cases resolved because the insurance companies, especially now that the courts are closed, um, are sitting on cases 
and, and waiting for, for things to reopen before they want to start writing those big, big checks. So fortunately, we were able to get some really significant settlements uh, in the books uh, right before the pandemic hit. Um, we'll call it PP, pre-pandemic. Uh, but we've also had uh, amazing success and results since the pandemic hit. I mean, we've settled you know, over 35 cases uh, probably now since the pandemic hit about five or six million dollars. You know, we're over 12 million dollars for the year. Uh, and a big case that, that put us over that hump initially was a case that settled on very, very early. Uh, and that was a case uh, that we were working on in the Bronx for, for several years. It was a pedestrian knockdown case. Uh, we, we use that expression knockdown when uh, a pedestrian is struck by a motor vehicle. And it was Jada. Uh, that's not her real name, but she was with us for several years. And you know, this was a case in which, you know, first of all, they blamed her for crossing against the light, which we were able to prove through surveillance video didn't happen. And then they were saying, oh, her injuries are exaggerated, that she's doing much better than she contends she is. Uh, and um, and uh, uh, we were able to refute that as well through doctor evidence. Sorry, I was just thinking about the ridiculous arguments that they were making. Uh, they, they were coming from left and right. But the good news is, is that, you know, she felt uh, very satisfied. And I'll start with the quote. And the quote was, everything went perfectly with my case. And I'm very happy with the results. Now, that's certainly an understatement because if you scroll down, uh, this lady got $2.65 million. So, yes, she was very happy with the results. Uh, I think everybody was very happy with the result because we knew justice was served. We knew that this was a situation that she could have, uh, if the insurance companies had their way, recovered nothing. Because first of all, they're saying they didn't cause the accident. Second of all, they're saying that their injuries weren't significant enough. And this was a, a, a situation that uh, we kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And then certainly on the eve of trial, again, this is right before the pandemic hit, when we were actually having jury trials. They say jury trials are now probably a year away. Um, can't have uh, you know, six strangers or eight strangers or 12 strangers uh, sitting uh, within only a few inches of each other these days, but maybe they'll do it, you know, a little spread out in the courtroom. I'm sure we'll adapt, but for right now, jury trials are on hold. Uh, but the threat of trial was there and the insurance companies wanted nothing to do with your boy, the case handler, in this case. So our demand was met of 2.65 million and that 2.65 million was to compensate her for her time out of work. Uh, she was uh, a, a tech over at uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. And uh, I'm sorry, Sloan Kettering. I apologize, Sloan Kettering. Uh, it was to compensate her for the medical bills uh, related to the injuries uh, from this accident and also for her pain and suffering. And uh, I, again, uh, I love the quote, the case handler team are excellent lawyers who perform well when push came to shove. Their efficiency throughout the whole process was astounding, smooth, and simple. I would recommend the case handler team to anyone involved in an accident. Adam, me, uh, is an outstanding lawyer and treated me like I was part of his family. And, uh, you know, the word family, I think, uh, you know, comes up over and over and over again in these, uh, these reviews and these quotes, because that is probably the most important aspect of my practice making sure that the clients do feel like family, making sure that the clients do feel like, you know, they're being watched after because who's going to watch after you more than family? Nobody. And if you treat your clients like family, they're going to sleep easier knowing at night that an attorney is out there fighting for their one and only shot of financial justice, fighting for that one chance they have. Uh, and that's exactly what we did in this case. And just another wonderful result uh, for a wonderful person. And our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID law. That's it.
You just heard from the case handler, a.k.a. the shark, because he goes for the juggler, ladies and gentlemen. You see, he doesn't play. I mean, he said that $2.65 million, like, you know, like, yeah, it's only 2.65. Well, that's only half as much as the biggest set. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. $2.65 million. That's a lot tax of money. Mon Tax-free money. Again, you do not pay taxes on personal injury settlements or personal injury verdicts. Uh, in Even fact, the, the uh, uh, an instruction to the jury, you know, during, uh, during the time in which the judge charges the jury at the end of the case, the judge gives the law of the case right before the jury decides. The judge specifically instructs, you should not factor in income tax in your award. You know, and that's, I guess, to prevent people from maybe giving more because let's say they wanted to give her 2.65 million. Maybe they would award her four and a half million to factor in thinking she's being taxed. Right. There's no taxes. So they wouldn't want, and you know, everything's yin and yang. They wouldn't want the defendant gotcha. to have to pay more than they should because right. taxes were being taken out. So they reminded that tax-free money, ladies and gentlemen. Got you. And also, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out of status, if you don't have a legal status in the United States of America, guess what? You can still use the case handler. You can still go for your accident cases with him, regardless of your status in the United States. And, and you know, Jada was an immigrant from Jamaica, uh, you know, had her citizenship, but uh, nonetheless an immigrant. And uh, like I said, it, it doesn't make a difference who you are, where you're from, what you're doing here. If you're hurt through the fault of somebody else, you're entitled to money. Absolutely. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's personal injury. We're going to be flipping it over to immigration right now. We do have um, two other attorneys on the panel. You just heard from one of the attorneys, Adam Handler, the case handler at um, PPID 844-774-3529. I want everyone to store his number. Dial it, let it ring 10, 15 seconds. This way he knows that you are actually storing his number. God forbid you ever get hurt in an accident. And when we say accident, we don't just mean automobile accident. Accidents, period. Give him a buzz. Let him do the analysis. The number, once again, is 844-774-3529. Flipping yeah. it over to the General and the Maverick, respectively, Alan E.K., an attorney, and Nelson Madrid, an attorney at the firm. They're partners there. I mean, and, you know, we got a couple of questions here that I want to throw in. All right. Nelson, I don't know if you want to jump all over this one or... Alan K. Let's see. Uh, I live in the U.S. on a CR1 visa, approved I-130 through marriage since June 2019, but have not yet received my provisional green card or SSN. My CR1 and my passport will expire next week. I have written the USCIS every month since February this year. Each time I receive the same response, we received your payment. You will receive your green card within 120 days after you enter the U.S. This has long passed. What can I do? Well, the, the fact that the passport is expiring is not really important. The important thing is what's happening to your CR1 case. And we have some ways what's to a, try what, to find all, out. What's a, what's a CR1? A con, it's a basically conditional resident status, which is typically given uh, when someone applies for an immigration benefit through marriage. And at the time they filed, they were not married for two years. They were married for less than two years. So what immigration does is they give them what's called conditional residency, which is valid for two years. Three months before the two years expires, you're supposed to file an application to remove the conditions and become a permanent resident. Permanent resident would give you a green card for 10 years. Um, now, I I'm a little confused. How does she know her case was approved? And if her case was approved and she never got her green card, you know, she could, if she's already filed her application to remove the conditions, she could technically schedule what's called an info pass appointment, take her receipt notice, go in person to 26, well, depending, and she should go to her local field office uh, with a copy of her receipt and they could put a stamp in her passport. Uh, the stamp is a, a temporary green card, which is typically valid for one year. It's called an I-551 stamp. Um, or she could file what's called an I-90 and basically request a new green card. Um, I've heard of situations where immigration does mail the people the green card. 
green card comes in a very inconspicuous envelope. It doesn't necessarily say USCIS. It actually looks, it looks like junk mail and a lot of people throw it out. Um, but that would be, that would be my recommendation. The only problem is you just can't walk into the immigration service these days. So if you need to have an appointment, you've got to go through a long process and call something called the contact center. And if things work out well, the contact center will give you an appointment or come to us and we will help you with that. Sure. Once again, folks, the number here is 844-774-3529, 844-774-3529. Quick one before we get to the top of the hour. I came to the USA 2011 spring as a student, F1 visa, and left 2013 summer, and came back to the United States 2015 spring one, F1 visa also, and stay until now. In this case, was I a resident alien when I reported taxes for 2018? I heard that after no, five an years. F, an, an F1 visa is a student visa. You're technically not supposed to work when you're a student. I was about to say. Um, so the fact that you work that you've worked, you've worked without authorization, which is a problem. Um, because you pay taxes, that does not uh, confer legal status. Um, so she's got a problem. Major problem. Mm -hmm. All right. And you need to actually reach out to the attorneys, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Adam, what are we going to do at the top of the hour? What do you think we're going to do? Are we going to continue the show? We're going to shut it down. We got a couple more questions. Well, listen, we have to remember, remind everybody. You know, are we doing a show tonight? Hey, I'm game. All right, all right. I'm, well, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, are you game? game? Uh, we're always game, but let, let's let's let everybody let everybody out there know because it's not going to be on the radio. So if you're listening to us right now on ninety three point five, like I said, if you can do us the favor. And if you are a Facebook uh, subscriber, uh, go to, uh, just start with my page, The Case Handler. Like the page, follow the page. Uh, and you'll be able to see all these shows whenever we, we run them, whether it's on the radio live or uh, in the evening. So uh, we will do a show this evening. Um, what time do you want to do the show, Squeeze? Uh, hey, let's do it the same time we did. I mean, six is fine with me. I mean- uh, All right, so six o'clock tonight, uh, log on to Facebook. We'll do an evening show. We'll update you on the day, uh, let you know what happened with the, the current events of the day and, and, uh, and things like that. But again, if you want to speak to us, give us a ring. The phones are actually ringing right now. 844-774-3529. 844-PPID-LAW. We're here to help. We want to help. And you'll be very happy with the way we do it. 844 844- 774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. My name is Adam Handler. I'm the partner of the personal injury practice here at Pollock Pollock Isaac DeSico. I'm with Nelson, Allen, the maestro, great attorneys, practicing attorneys here to help. Give us a ring, 844-774-3529. There you have it, folks. Once again, Facebook is where we're at. David Squeeze Attic is Facebook page. Adam Handler's Facebook page. PPID's Facebook page. That's what we do here, ladies and gentlemen. Reach out to us. We're answering questions on personal injury and, yes, immigration. Make sure you tune in later on at 6 p.m. It's a great show coming up. And they caught me on that one. <laughs> you almost had it. You were this close. <laughs> yeah. All right. No problem. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. What Adam is talking about is it's because we try to time the top of the hour on 93.5 FM so we don't get choked. But I just got choked. All right. But I'm very glad that they're batting the choke holes, hopefully. All right. <laughs> All right. So listen up. Let's get back into it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some more questions on the immigration side here. Thanks to all the people who are a part of the WhatsApp group placing their questions there. And thanks to Tracy for also you know, forwarding questions to us. I want to say thank her so much for doing that, going through all of our Facebook pages. Um, my friend have filed for OPT STEM extension and all these, you know, all these abbreviations, you know, acronyms. Uh, my friend have filed for OPT STEM extension and USCIS has received packet on 2nd June 2020, which was one week before initial OPT end date. OPT end date was 9th of June. 
we got a rejection notice on 617 from USCI saying that the reason for applying was not mentioned. They also gave another reason that he get that he have not sent the proper amount to USCIS, which is 410, but he did send them the right amount and has proper evidence for that. They have told him to please resubmit the application package. Can he resubmit it as his initial OPT expired on the 6th of June, 2020? That's a long one. Yes, um, he should uh, and include proof that it was timely filed. I would also make mention of the same in the cover letter um, and let them know that this filing should be considered timely because it was previously filed, you know, and close here with, please find proof of the same and basically just refile it. Simple as that. All right. But All right. that actually happens, Squeeze. It, it's, it's a very common, you know, it's very common. You know, sometimes they ask for an updated medical, you send the medical, they say they never got the medical. You have to show them that they in fact did receive it. That's why it's best to either hand deliver things, send via Federal Express. You need to be able to track it some way. Um, again, in this case, hopefully, you know, when they send something back, they typically give you what's called a rejection letter with that and tell right. you the reason why it's rejected, which obviously, you know, based on what he's saying, um, they're saying that he uh, included incorrect fees. So just include a copy of the letter and just basically make the argument. Or in the, in the alternative, if you're not comfortable doing that, come to us and we will do it for you. Way to go, General. Way to go. The point, making it clear that they're standing by as, as attorneys, ready, willing, and able to help you. So once again, if you want to reach out to the General Alan K or Nelson Madrid, ladies and gentlemen, call them now at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Once again, they're here to help each and every one of us, everyone who's got questions on immigration. It's a free phone consultation that you are getting. So once again, make sure you place that question. Here's one, uh, uh, Tracy saying, Tracy Brooke here on, on the page, Adam. Let me see what she's saying. Oh, at Case Handler. Okay, okay, the attorney is here. I have a friend of mine in 2016 um, was in H2B visa at a certain holiday resort in Virginia. One of her coworkers accidentally hit her with a huge laundry linen carrier. She was afraid to sue the company. Due to that, she still has back pain and she's taking over the counter medication, taking over the counter medi medication for pain. She has no health insurance. She's now an illegal immigrant. Is there anything that can be done? So she was hurt at work. I missed that first part. Yeah, I have a friend of mine in 2016 who was on an H2B visa at a certain holiday resort in Virginia. One of our coworkers accidentally hit her with a huge laundry list. Now, there's unfortunately, uh, well, I don't know the statute of limitations in Virginia, but I can tell you it's certainly not going to be longer than New York, which is three years. So if it happened in 2016, there's really nothing she can do, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to recover any kind of compensation. Uh, she may have been eligible for workers' compensation benefits, but I'm guessing that if she was here at a status, she was not working on the books. And if you're not working on the books, um, most likely they're not going to have you officially as an employee enlisted on the workers' compensation insurance. But uh, if she wants to give me a ring, I I'm happy to discuss this case more in detail. But uh, from the sounds of it, there's probably nothing that can be done. And that's why we say, ladies and gentlemen, don't wait. <laughs> if you get into an accident, you know, even if you may not have a case, you've got nothing to lose. The phone call is absolutely free. We can tell you this right away and, and we won't be able to tell you, uh, you know, I'm sorry, and we won't be telling you, uh, you, you ran out of time. So the moral of this story is that if you are injured, unfortunately, whether at work or on the street or in a car or, you know, in a hospital, uh, pick up the phone, give us a call. Uh, let us know what happened and we'll let you know uh, if we can help you. Okay. All right. One more question, guys. And um, that's it. Can you get a B1, B2 visa converted into a student visa? Oh, what? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Can you, can you get a B1, B2 visa converted into a student visa in parentheses J1? How long will this process take? 
Alan? I let so you we're talking that. about changing from what? From B1, B2 to what? Convert to a J. Yeah, it says kind of into a student visa and parentheses got J1. How long will this process take? All right, so if the person is here on a B1, B2 visitor's visa, and as long as their visa status as B1 or B2 has not expired, they can file for a change of status to student, but you can't go to school until that change of status to student is approved. And also to get student visa, you have to get an I-20 from the school that you want to go to. I-20 is a form issued by, which shows the school is recognized by the Immigration Service to have foreign students. So you get an I-20, the I-20 will say, what are the living expenses? What is the tuition expenses? And when you file your application to change from visitor to student, you have to put an affidavit of support or some proof that you have enough money to go to school here without working for at least the first year. And it's gonna take maybe six months until you hear something. And remember, you can't go to school. It can't start until it's approved. Alan, I have a question. Yep. What, what would happen if the J is ultimately denied? Um, does that person fall out of status? Hypothetically, if the case pens for eight months and now her visitor or his visitor visa has expired, does the person fall out of status and begin accruing unlawful presence? If you're asking if it's the, if the application to change the student visa is denied. Correct. Then the person has a big problem because they're out of status. And if they're out of status more than a year, more than six months and they leave the country, they're bought for three years from coming back. If they're out of status more than a year, they're bought for 10 years from coming back. So, it may be a question of trying to file a motion to reopen to try to challenge the denial, but you've got a problem if your application is denied and you better come and see us right away. There okay. you go. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes cruising with a case handler, but I want everyone right now to store the number, dial the number or call them and get help from these attorneys. Once again, cruising with a case handler, tune in each and every single weekday morning at 8.30 a.m. on 93.5 WVIP FM in New York. And also on Saturdays between six and eight, Sundays at 12 noon, you've got to check us out. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been helping a lot of people and I'm very proud of it as David Squeeze your broadcaster. And I want to say thanks to Alan Kay, the general. I want to say thanks to Nelson Madrid. I want to say thanks to my co-pilot, the case handler. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you call them now yeah, we know this is an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Nisiko. And we know that prior results do not guarantee some of that outcome. However, you have seen the proof which has been in the pudding. Take a bite out of it. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I want everyone watching this to dial that number now, store that number, retain the attorneys after you get your free phone consultation, hire them. 844-774-3529. Give the number to someone. 844-774-3529. Text it to someone. 844-774-3529. Email it to someone. 844-774-3529. Post it on your social media platforms. 844-774-3529. With that said, I bid you farewell. Have an amazing day, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.